Well, we are back, huh? We're back at the Nine Club, everybody. Let me tell you, today we got a special, special, special guest. <laughs> huh? We got Mr. Evan Smith is in the house. Hello, people of the world. What is <laughs> going out there? What is going on, man? You guys got a crazy planet. Let me just tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! What do you mean what? we do? You you living in it too? Oh, I know. I'm here with you okay, too. Okay. Okay. Man, like, whoo. Well, what's crazy about it? What's going? Well, you first of all, you have a rabbit on your lap. You know, that I just got to tell the people who not who aren't watching. First you know, things you got, first. You yeah, guys know Basil. Basil, yeah, yeah. The Hello, house, Basil. the house rabbit. I like to introduce Basil to all the people out there. Previous fan here. There you go. Me, I just <laughs> I seen Basil and I just can't. I just I, I gotta be a rabbit fan. I, you know, I just, <laughs> when you see rabbits, it's just, whew. who's got it easier, animals or humans on this planet we live in? Huh? Ah, it's debatable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, imagine what it'd have to be like to survive in the wild. That's now, true. A pet, that's different. But. That's true. A human is a human of age is kind of similar, you know, trying to work through society, trying to make it work. That's you know? right. Well, this is going to be good. Oh, now you got to. Um, Basil comes with a lot of fur. A lot of fur. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll give you a lint roller. Uh, if I'm not you, worried if you, about you, it. No, I'm you're stoked. good. Oh, there you yeah. go. Look, he's just lint rolling it with his hands. Yeah. <laughs> there we have you a shake joint lint roll around here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, dude, welcome, dude. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming by, brother. Sure. It's good to see you, as always. Yeah, it is a pleasure to be here. Hey, this is going to be great, man, because let me tell you something. Big fan. Big fan. Yes. Always been a big fan and everything. But I, I don't know that much about you, bro. You know? So, this is going to be great. We're going to talk and hear about your life and growing up. And it's going to be great. You know... We're talking about fanning. Mm -hmm. I mean, so and growing up, I grew up watching you and Kelly skating. Oh, thank and, you, bro. Uh, and, and maybe Rogers know, filming without even Rogers knowing filming, it. Oh, for, yeah. for sure, without a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> and man, like that paved the way and gave me hope when I was a kid. Oh, thank you, I had bro. a pretty crazy situation happen when I was younger. You know, oh, kind of being out on the streets a little bit, oh, fending wow. for myself. Okay. Everything was fine um, with my family, but mm -hmm. I just saw that renegade lifestyle, and oh, I you chose. really wanted to take advantage. You chose of it. it. <laughs> yeah. Totally. What age? Between you know, thirteen, sixteen. Okay, and this was in just when the conscious being kind of sits. Uh -huh. and you start to realize what's going on when you're a kid. Kid, you don't, you have no idea. Sure. You know? Right. But um, I would go to the skate park. That was one place that I felt all right. You, you know? felt comfortable. Yeah, I went to the skate park in Florida called Metro Skate Park. Okay. Owned by Simon Odrick and Brett Peterson. Oh, outdoor park, indoor. Indoor park. Yeah, okay. In a, um, in a, like a grocery store. So the ground was just slick and slippery. Oh. But was it had, an old gro grocery store? It was like an older grocery store, had closed down, and they built this insane skate park. And they put green skate light all over the whole thing. Oh, so that's sick. So it had this like really crazy vibe in there. <laughs> it was just like, yeah, it was like insane. I remember going there and watching somebody do a skate trick and being like, oh my God. Like, I didn't even know you could, like, get it off the ground and stuff. You know, like, we were messing around our neighborhood, you sure. know. Sure, rolling around. And then I finally saw it, and I was like, um, and then I had forgotten when I was even younger than that, my uncle, who used to be a professional skateboarder, uh -huh. what? Um, he, he took me to watch skating when I was younger, and I faintly remember it, and then I had to, like, kind of watch some clips and put it together. Oh. So now I have the memory dial, but... He, in a run, did a finger flip to lean tail on the vert ramp at Tampa Am. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. 2005 or something like that. Wow. And he hung up, flew to flat, oh. broke his collarbone. Oh. My mom's on the deck. I'm on the deck, and we're just like, oh, my God. Look at my mom. She looks at me. Was this <laughs> so during his what? run? or during just his run. Run. Oh, wow. Gets up, finishes his line, lands the finger flip lean tail. <laughs> Had no idea he had a completely broken collarbone. Yeah. And then later on, we took him to the hospital, sure enough. like, And it was just this crazy thing. You know, we imagine when you're a little kid, you like you have no idea. What's your uncle's name? Uh, my uncle's name is Mike Spranzo. Hmm. Mike Spranzo. Who did he write for? Yeah. He wrote for a Tracker and Sims. Oh, okay. And he, yeah, he was a vert skater. Um, oh. And funny about that, though, when I got to Tampa, when I was walking through, I saw Rodrigo Peterson do a switch tail slide 270 out down a ledge. Uh-huh. And I was like, that's what I want to do. 
<laughs> yeah, I saw street skating and then I saw vert skating all at a very youthful age, you know. Rodrigo Peterson sealed the deal for you. I mean, yeah. Um, and then I, I went back to my skate park. I started watching videos, started being coherent of these things. Oh, and, okay. Um, I got my hands on One Step Beyond. One Step oh, Beyond. Oh, wow. That's audio. a good video. I've heard of that video. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that was my first real skate video. Damn. And I saw your interviews in that video. Yeah. Yeah, of course. There's like two hours of commentary. Mm -hmm. And... I would just listen to the way people talk, listen to the way Richie Belton spoke and, you know, Brian Sumner and like everyone's thing. And, and even you're on there talking. Just mumbling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They had to rewind a couple of times. What, what is that? And the story of the dark man and, yeah, and yeah, J, yeah. JT ended up going to work for DC for a while. Just the whole full circle nature. Right. And Danny Montoya and Kenny Anderson mm -hmm. and their kind of Long Beach crude style like thing which i didn't even know about at the time right i just remember danny montoya doing nollie heel frontside nose slides down handrails Dude. and nollie heel backside nose blunts crazy and i forever wanted to nollie heel flip that was your <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> yeah, right. <It> was like, <laughs> and so yeah my time as a as a youth goes on and i'm just in florida in a place that's surrounded by just the most brutal natured stuff. I mean, there's lots of pills, there's lots of people mm. falling off, and there's lots of meth and drugs, like most places in the world. What, what town was this? What it was, was in it? Orlando. Orlando. Oh, out, outer city, Orlando. Okay. Yeah. Huh. And um, man, I just like, every time I went to the skate park, I felt like I was home, you know? Like, yeah. I really did. And right. everyone accepted me from me being the little shithead that I was. Okay, you know? <laughs> yeah. And somehow... I got a call from Danny Montoya one day what? and he said, do you want to go on a trip? And so how was this happening though? What um, did you send a video? I started or, yeah, what? through the skate park. I Danny Montoya just doesn't call anybody. No, so, <laughs> <He> just, <laughs> no, I started getting hooked up through um, getting flowed listened through my skate park. And That's I started insane. getting flowed DC through Jeff Pang. And, and so like kind of the full circle of the whole thing, it led to somehow Danny being in Florida and being like, I want to take this guy on a trip. Wow. I never even fathomed leaving. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and I was like, you know, mom, like, what do I do? And, you know, the reason why I bring my uncle into this is mm -hmm. because she didn't know what to do. Like, she, I was like, I want to drop out of school. And I had great grades. Like, I was like, I'm going to drop out of school and I want to go skateboard. Oh, damn. And this is what, 13, 14 years old? Um, 15 at this time. 15. Okay. And I was, yeah, 10th, 11th, 11th grade. Were you skating with, like, there was a pretty good skate scene out there, it looked like. Oh, Kevin Perez and all those totally. kids? Totally. I mean, like, Danny Renaud mm -hmm. and, like, De La and, like, oh, yeah. these dudes would come to the park and, like, I'd watch them skate. And that's, like, kind of who I followed, you know, Jimmy Lennon. And, like, oh, yeah. You dude. know, like, the scene in Florida is pretty deep. Sure. You know, Last of the Mohicans, Joe Parent, you know, like, all. <laughs> All that shit was like just like the forecast video mm -hmm. just like fucking hot chocolate tour video like Damn. those are like on our tv screen at our skate park mm. that's like all i knew and then i had one step beyond and then gold member <laughs> oh yeah yeah those are my videos you know the austin powers hot gold chocolate yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hot chocolate i was, was like wait what's that what's that yeah, skate video member. yeah oh, shit, austin the gold powers. member <laughs> yeah, austin i powers. think it's about gold wheels I was like, Whoa, <laughs> that's good. and so my mother mm-hmm Calls my uncle because he knew about skating. Yeah. She was like, what do I do? Do I let him go, you know? And he was like, yeah, he'll be fine. This is a place for him. Sure. And he knew it, you know? Wow. And so sure. my mom, sure enough, hit me up. She goes, yeah, you can drop out of school and go skateboard. That's wow. crazy. And I went on a tour and I didn't come back for like three months. Three months? Yeah, I just went on another tour. I went on another <laughs> tour. I went to Long Beach. I went to California. I got on Ezekiel. Went on two <laughs> other trips. Like I just started like meeting people uh -huh. and realizing that like yeah we have our circles but right. in skating it's such a family our circles spread in yep. the craziest ways that Absolutely. i couldn't that, that puts me here in this room with you guys now right and the fruits of that is unlike any other industry in the world no societal thing i've ever witnessed has anything close to the grassroots nature that skating does mm -hmm. yeah. it is like hands down you know uh, yeah seen surfers i've seen snowboarders all this stuff mm -hmm. like it's pretty close but skaters or like like before i had a girlfriend man i would have fucking jumped in front of a bus for any one of my friends oh and, seriously yo i mean now i gotta kind of keep my family tight. right yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you think it twice about when that I'm bus like, yeah, I'm not, I'm yeah. like ah don't don't but <laughs> just I'm not, I'm not i got some <laughs> shit going on <laughs> now that's amazing though i mean here you are 15 years old you're dropping out of school 
and already traveling mm-hmm. three months on the road here, Long Beach, and and plus with uh, Danny Montoya, Rodrigo Peterson. Yeah, guys that I like, you know? grew up watching interviews of yeah. and listening to them talk and hearing their perspective and the way they use vocabulary that I didn't know. You know, like... There's a, it's a hard for people that don't skateboard to fathom the things that we're talking about, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, but now that I understand it, it's like, of course, dude, like, right, right. Toya, of course, like, yeah. dark man, like, pff, thousand mile roll with the cigarettes. I wonder how he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's doing. Yeah, he's doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and at this time you're just flow, right? You're flow for just getting bored. Listen, just getting bored. And that was a trip. I mean, like, and then Ezekiel comes into yeah, picture dude, and then mckendo and yo, mark yeah. stewart That's who right. was working for mckendo at the time right wow and man like mark stewart was like really receptive to me too mm-hmm. he he was like let's go skate yeah. and it was the first time i had ever like I and mean, we went street skating and stuff but okay. it wasn't like this yeah. he had the, the the vx everything like and i was just like oh my god we're about to go to the streets you know so when, <laughs> when we got to a spot i was like bah! Like, just going <laughs> crazy, <huh>? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking cow. <laughs> not knowing the wrath of the human body and the limitations oh, of it, you know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and right. not knowing the streets. Oh, because you were a skate park kid, yeah, right? Yeah, first time I came out to California, I didn't know the streets. Oh, yeah. really? I found myself at Bricktown, <laughs> flew my homie in. He was 14. Okay. I was 16. Wow. And we're filming, best day ever, like getting stacking clips, everything. Mm-hmm. Fucking dude rolls up. White wall tire bike, Psh, pulls out a gun. Oh shit! Oh. Give me all your stuff. I'm like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Sixteen years old. I yeah. look at my friend. He looks at me. We're both like kind of scared. We're we're with Austin Namba. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. And Matt Dreyer. Yeah, yeah, Mark yeah. Stewart. Mm-hmm. And we're filming, and Matt Dreyer kind of sees the situation happening. Mm-hmm. He like goes to his car and like. Namba like was like talking to him whatever ends up giving him the camera dryer comes around the corner with a knife and he like per- he's like like starts yelling getting aggro and the kid kind of got spooked and like kind of pushed the gun a little bit to the side mm-hmm. dryer grabs the camera and we all start running the oh, guy's got a gun he's got a gun uh, he, he's like 16 oh, oh, it's yeah. crazy but still those are the, the most yeah. dangerous <laughs> yeah. fucking yeah. kids that really don't even, really psycho yeah. And so me and my buddy Miles, we're skating down the sidewalk as fast as we can away, not looking back, knowing mm-hmm. somebody has a gun. Sure. And it was the first time that we'd ever really, really been out in the streets of fucking Santa Ana, you know? Like, <laughs> and my homie hits a crack oh, and no. fucking slams so hard. And I'm just like, like, he starts bleeding. And I'm just like, fuck, dude. Like, I just grab him, like, leave the boards. Like, we're going like, to start running. We go around the corner, run up to the first house. And... Luckily, they were Spanish, mm. and the Spanish people are just very open arm, you mm-hmm. know. And we were like, "Like, can we use your phone?" Blah blah blah. And they like let us in, gave us some water, sat us down, cleaned my buddy up. Oh wow! The cops came up and did the report, and then we figured it out. Wow! Jeez. Yeah. Man. So it was like this whole experience, and I'm sure you guys have had your own share of experience yeah but that's yeah. like classic horror movie like you're running the guy trips Dude, and then you're yeah. trying to, and then like they get up and then Absolutely and especially at a young age like that I know. We were 16. Such yeah. babies dude. i had crazy. no idea you know like i had no idea how to like look out for myself i feel like a grown-ass man would do the same thing yeah <laughs> oh dude no, totally. for sure. <laughs> no but raj wouldn't even <laughs> stop and pick me up he would no, just keep running pulling, <laughs> pulling a knife is pulling a knife is pretty ballsy dude, yeah. dude. Yeah. that's i don't Dude, um, dryers move? Yeah. Oh my God, what are you thinking? Now that I look back on it, I'm like, God, like, what? Like, that, thank that, you, yeah. Matt. Like, like one squeeze of the trigger, bro. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, like, uh, could have been loaded, could have not been loaded, sure. could have been fake, could have not been fake, but like, you never know. it never fucking know. looked real and that kid was not fucking around. And he was throwing up gang signs and mm-hmm. like, I understand what it's like out here now. Yeah, that's so uh, the fruits of skating have been like, tsh, just deeply embedded in my life, man. And like, yeah. I forever will give every part of myself to this industry in hopefully helping the next generation of kids have a place, have a home. All those kids that don't think they have anything, like, look at you guys. You guys are open-armed guys. You know, like, Mm -hmm. most people, you... You'd be like, yeah, you want to chat? You know, you need some inspo? Like, come here, you know? Like, like we got you. Right, That's skating. It's warm. Oh, yeah, totally. 
That's the right thing. I'm skateboarding. You could be skating down the street and meet somebody. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, best buds. You That's know? the only way to like get anything done in any country where you don't know the language. There you go. You see a skater and you're like, ah, can you help me? You know, like, oh, yeah. I need to go here. Come here. I got you. <laughs> right. You know, like, Next thing you know, you're at dinner, you're at his house, and you're sleeping <laughs> over. That's our network, yeah. man. Yeah. That's us. Nobody else. It's, it's the trip. most important thing ever. So I hold that very, very dear to my my heart. Right. And it's hard life, to it's hard to explain that to my other family. people. It is like yeah. people. A lot of other people outside of skateboarding don't understand how really. Yeah, that, I don't like, know if you call it lucky. You could explain it like, to them, but yeah. they don't really get it. <sighs> yeah, it's that yeah. they don't really the feel it. Mentality yeah. thing that's like <laughs> I just don't get it. Like I don't see no coworker working nine to five is gonna fucking jump in front of a bus for his coworker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Fuck no, dude. Like, I mean, the guy I saw at the copy machine this morning. No, no, no. I'm not. But if I saw <laughs> someone fucking with any one of you guys, I'd be like, hey, stop. You know, I'd be right there next to you. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I know you guys would too. It's just how we work. You know. Well, Kelly, I don't yeah. know, but yeah. you know, I, I would be right there, bro. I'd so be right, I'd be right there. there, bro. It's just like it, it needs to be known out there. Everybody in the world needs to understand how important this is. Yeah. You know, I know it's important for you guys and myself, but for totally. millions of kids. It's millions true. Millions of yeah. kids. It's true. Like, honestly. There's true. kids probably started skating today. I hope so, man. You know, probably wouldn't bought an Evan Smith board. <laughs> You know what I mean? Whatever. You can buy whatever the hell you want, but <laughs> fucking, man, as long as you're on that fucking board, sure. you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, look what it's done for you. I mean, oh, I get to sit on the nine club. Yeah. Oh, come on. Man. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Holy shit. So you're doing all this stuff now. I mean, well, congratulations, first of all, I must say, um, the, the Element Peace video is incredible that was it was incredible yeah, we went to the premiere it's actually dude, uh, the real person you gotta thank for this one though is minor like, John Ma- of course dude bro. I mean like I don't understand how somebody could be in skating has bring me and my all my friends so much inspiration our whole life then getting to work with him yeah. just like same situation with you guys you know right it's fucking crazy and then him pulling such fruitful things out of each skater. Like when I watched the part that he made for Tyson mm-hmm. and the way the bad brains baseline works with Tyson's mongoloid free spirit. <laughs> thing, right. Yeah. There's nothing better. Yeah. And like for somebody to find that, like I hope that direction of Tyson skating gets embellished again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's so many facets of that free natured skating right. and He's made so many parts with Westgate, and this one is like this new style of really core driven stuff. You know, it's totally. like, and him working with Julian and Nick for the first time, their, their, their parts are fucking insane. The way yeah. they skate, they look so incredible on their skateboards. It's, yeah, it's, like, it's unbelievable. And Grayson fucking oh handing God. off the camera to Chris Gregson when they're in the bowl. Dude, like, that's the most impressive stuff. It's just oh, so yeah. cool. <laughs> Jacko. And, yeah, Jacko's part Jacko? is... <laughs> Jacko, yeah. <laughs> Jacko's part is Dude, crazy, It's man. insane. That's a new day one. And that's, and we'll, <laughs> like, we'll, 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 we'll totally get into the whole element video uh, a little bit later on but i just wanted to congratulate you because Dude, it is a you, fucking phenomenal video yeah, honestly it's a real pleasure to be a part of that one it's actually um coming out on the 16th which mm-hmm. is uh tomorrow tomorrow yeah holy cow world premiere <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> all the people please it, it, it's show no mercy on the slap boards <laughs> <laughs> no it is a phenomenal video and I'm not just saying that because you're sitting here it, 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 it really is a yeah. fucking no it feels like a really good skate video great video it is it's insane yeah, that's all I care about as long as they feel like that driven skate nature well, like stuff. you said man they uh, John Minor captured everybody so eloquently yeah, you know he didn't it's have like, much time to do it either there you go which is he was only on board for what the year and a half or something yeah, two yeah, years like year and a half yeah. yeah and you've been working on it for four or five, five years, years. Wow. yeah i've been filming for it for five years and you guys also put out uh was it zygote yeah and we put two out zygote mm. which is kind of like a promo for it in yeah. a way and that was two years ago crazy and we put a bunch of footage in that too you know, so it's just like so many projects. Would, I mean, the, the video's like 60 minutes. You know what I yeah, mean? And, and let me tell you something. I can watch, I like. we should talk about, well, let's, let's talk about it now. Okay? <laughs> I could watch this open video. Up. You open know, up. some video. <laughs> God damn it, a fly just went in my coffee. <laughs> it's 50, 50 points if you catch it. You know what I mean? I can't, I'm not that dude. I have to put it, I got to put this away now. This is not. <laughs> I'll have to take a break soon and, and re, re-up on the coffee. But uh <laughs> fucking flew right in there. It's, thirsty. It, it's just like, you know, like you were saying, like a video parts to me means so much because the music, everything that goes along with it, like 
the guy skating is one thing, but to have the music, yeah, it, it defines that person as well. That's true. You so know? It's really important. It's so yeah. important. And so important for you each know? person's skating style. Did sure. you choose your song? Because that song was awesome. Thank you, dude. Um, I think Minor ended up choosing it in the end, but mm. we had both been talking about all types of different music for different people, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, luckily, Minor, like, worked with me on the video. Sick. And he allowed me to give him creative, creative feedback. And there wasn't one point in the video production process that I hadn't had the chance to be like, uh, don't do anything else. You know what I mean? Like, like every single time he'd show me something, I'd be like, don't change it. Don't like, change it. Yeah. No, it's perfect. Like no fade, not like, no, it's perfect. Like, don't mm -hmm, do anything. You know, like mm -hmm. I really had not one bad thing to say. He's a very you know, talented guy. Like, really he's good. skating so crazy. Yeah. And, and that's what you need, man. You need somebody like that on, you know, on, a, on a video of this caliber. Yeah. You know, because it is a huge caliber video. I mean, it's, it's, it's really big. Yeah. It's a really huge. big production. But um, me and mine were on, that, on like a trip together, you know, just talking shit about music, you know, talking, trying to feel out everything. And he, thought, he was like, dude, this old flame we weren't even talking about skating or anything he's like dude i just love listening to this old flaming lips video or music mm -hmm. is Ambrosi ambrosiac i think mm. is what it's called and it's kind of like a little bit of an underground flaming lips album like it's not on the big side of it mm -hmm. it's just like was this little thing that slipped under the radar we, we had been driving and we listened to the whole piece start to finish and it has these keyboard cascading things that you know that start the part off sure mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. they're they're just very serene when they hit in reality, even especially with a great visual landscape, you know, because we'll be out in somewhere yeah. Yeah. beautiful driving from city to city and just these long, long drone style things. And like, it's just super far out. And me and him were like really tripping on it together, really enjoying that sound is made, made like that. And, mm -hmm. and then we, we talked about all these options, whatever. And then eventually I was just like, Dude, let's just keep trying this stuff. You yeah. know, let's keep working with this album. There's like f five songs on there that are incredible for skating. Okay. And then he picked that one. It and fits you there. perfectly. Yeah, that was really yeah. good. It really Thank does. Thank you, yeah. dude. Yeah, I really, really am stoked that we could use the Flaming Lips, you know, like yeah. Kyrie Foster. You oh, know, my like, God. Dude, I mean, like the history of Flaming Lips skating, what they do. It's kind of like watching Built to Spill in skating. You know, it's got mm, like yeah. this thing to it. Like, mm -hmm. Am I wrong about that? Did Cairo use a Flaming Lips song? Was that the Lakai video? I think it was Lakai video. Yeah. It was Lakai video. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think it was. I don't yeah. want to get the facts wrong. I'm on the record right now. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know. We can fact check afterwards. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, just like that music style being mm -hmm. in, in, interweaved in skating and then being able to be a part of it in an underground album sense. And yeah. like, I re I like respect the underground nature of anything. You know, there's a part of every industry that like... You gotta, oh yeah, you got to keep your yeah. eyes off. Well, that's you funny know, like because I didn't even I didn't even realize it was a Flaming Lips song, you know. So yeah, it is very far out. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll we let's let's go back because we'll we'll talk about the whole video also because I know you had an injury at the very end of that video too, the last year or something of filming for that. So we'll get into all that as he uh, brushes all the bunny hair off his shirt. <laughs> so let's go back though. I want to go back to um, you know. You coming to Long Beach, skating with Montoya, doing all that. Now, you eventually got on Listen, or no? Um, yeah. Um, they were down t to... I mean, I don't know if I did officially get announced. Okay. But I was I on... I like you were on, for I was sure. On yeah. a, I was on all the trips with them, and it, maybe it would have gotten to that point mm -hmm. if Listen had continued. Gotcha. Which I'm all right with Listen not continuing. I mean, I love that company, mm -hmm. and I, like, I wish it did, but what's going on with Boulevard and, you know, what's happened with Element. There, there's mm -hmm. some fruit in that stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's not to be overlooked. Right, you know, right. I, I believe what they did with Boulevard is just perfect. Oh, they, they're, oh, yeah, yeah, they're on top of it. Yeah, it's I just like doing. super incredible. So I've seen Brian Brown recently. Brian oh, Brown? Wow. Like, phew, I hadn't seen him in so long. We got to hang out. Me and my buddies were on a no hotels trip up in New York. Okay. And we're staying at McCarran Park. Mm. Like literally sleeping under the van and on the streets oh, shit. in Brooklyn. Wow, under and the van? Yeah, Chad slept under the van. I slept on the streets next to him. <laughs> Chad poor. Couldn't go get a hotel. <laughs> nah, no hotels, no? man. Nah, no. I don't do that. <laughs> no, I, I mean like on, on in crazy countries and stuff. Like yeah, you can get a hotel, but like 
you're gonna lose an experience you know like get all your homies and you got your tents and you need somewhere to stay in brooklyn either you're climbing someone's establishment to try to sleep on the roof or you're sleeping on the streets and like the the, the reality of that yeah. is such an insane experience. We we want that. Okay. We don't want to go sit in the fruit a fucking hotel all fancy. You know, like <laughs> that's for like re- resort style living. That's great. You know. Yeah. But we want to bring the crust out of everything. <laughs> it's, impo- it's very important. I would have met you back at the park in the morning. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but saw Brian and he was just cruising through. Got to meet up with him. And he's got the same nollie backside heel flip as always. Mm -hmm. It has never changed. It never will change. There is nobody with a better flat ground nollie backside heel flip. I I believe that. It's just like... Brian Brown. You know what's rad is like his style is so distinct. There's no one skates like him. Yeah. You see him skate, it's like, oh, it's Brian Brown. Oh, yeah. 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 The backside flip. Dude, the backside flips are proper. (laughs) Ah, Shift the foot. Yeah. 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 Man. Love you, Brian, man. You, you said, okay, so listen finishes, right? It's no no more listen. What do you do? Um, listen finished. Um, I didn't do anything for a little bit. And then um, I knew Nick Garcia pretty well. Okay, and, yeah. And Ryan DeWitt before he passed away. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, I was, got this crazy feeling. I don't know. I just called up Nick and he was like, dude, I mean... Let me see, you know? And I was like, all right. And me, I knew Julian Davidson as well. Okay. So we already had this like really tight trio. Gotcha. And like, I really wanted to just be with my friends. I wasn't thinking about my career or thinking about like yeah any of that. Like that was the last thing I was thinking about. I was thinking about being with people that I wanted to be with, you know? Yeah. And then it just led me to like DeWitt and <laughs> Nick and then... You know Cole Matthews coming into the picture, yep, yep. and then the refurbished nature that he had brought to Element, allowing a new seed. Just like you know when Levi and Tim Tim were in there, there you, you know, go. yeah, like just they had this period in time in that element elementality era mm-hmm. that was just like so special. And then, like any big corporation, obviously they have to you know move through whatever. Mm. Opened up space for Cole and all these new guys to come in. Yeah. And, and yeah, we like, yeah, totally just took it as a grain, traveled, and I mean, we made Future Nature. There you and go. That was kind of like mm-hmm. the beginning of it. And I was going into 2013. Okay. And kind of like when that was released, then I guess everyone showed up at our music venue in Pittsburgh and they gave me a board. You know? Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean? <laughs> your, back up. Your music venue in Pittsburgh, what is this? Yeah, my aunt and my uncle maybe 15 years ago. Okay. Um, no, who skates? My uncle that skates, yeah. Mike. Okay. Um, his wife is in a band called Rusted Root. Okay. Um, Liz Berlin. And she had been traveling. Um, they had like some heavy singles that went out. Their music was on in Ice Age and Matilda. Oh, wow. And they had this crazy established band in the 90s. Mm-hmm. They actually still play a little bit. Oh, cool. Um, uh, they always wanted to start a studio. Mm. And so they got an old 18th century church, started to refurbish it, and mm. eventually turned it into a music venue. And, oh, wow. Um, now it's an established music venue in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. It's about 800 capacity. It's a big and, place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a place that they started. And like, um, yeah, my uncle had a skate park there as well. So that's kind of what led me up to Pittsburgh was like, I want to learn how to build skateboarding. You know, like okay. he, he taught me how to build and use use power tools and you know lay footers and decks and right. you know, all that so i was just like intrigued with that whole time period that was like i don't know four months of my life straight you know just really really only building a skate park mm. opened the park we had it for like i don't know seven years or something like that oh, wow. wow yeah and it was an outdoor suburban park. So it was just like this crazy, like structured thing. Like we had made like serpents and stuff. <laughs> oh, really? Just like wild, fast, aggressive nature things. Almost like something would, somebody would BMX on them. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And uh-huh. then, so like that was kind of like where I had skated for a while. And this like big, fast thing, you know? And yeah. in our local, I was telling you about my local park back in Florida. Half of it was a, a bike park. So oh. it as well had humongous ramps with fast shit and like mm-hmm. big wall rides okay. and like all this stuff. And like, oh. it was just like, 
we'd always go to the bike side because they were our homies. And I mean, obviously we had biker skater drama but sure yeah like any young kids should have <laughs> i'm cool with the bikers man <laughs> <laughs> but the, like when we were younger they held this con they held this contest called bako hmm. and they had like strippers on the deck oh wow and kegs everywhere and we're like no know, wonder you're kicking like, it with them yeah. little kids we're like you guys are fucking dope like <laughs> what are we doing <laughs> right. like I was sitting in the shop watching skate videos, all good. Like, this is mental. This like, is a whole new world. Yeah. And it almost looked like Halloween the way they all dressed. You didn't actually go to from Orlando to Pittsburgh. Like, your family still lives in Orlando, but you, you, yeah. some of your other family wasn't from Pittsburgh. And yeah, just like spread out. You know what I mean? Oh. I saw some opportunity. Okay. And yeah. yeah. I was wondering where the Pittsburgh thing came into play. Yeah, just like had the opportunity to build. Sure. And my uncle was willing to teach me. How long were you skating for Element before they came up to there and, and gave you a board? I think I had been skating with Element for a while. Because um, mm. that's when, you know, like I said, Cole Matthews came in the picture. Mm -hmm. um, Matters and everyone. We started creating this like really cool click after Future Nature, you know, all working on a project. And I mean, off the top, I couldn't tell you exactly, but it was a, definitely a an established period okay. where like I felt at home, you know? Sure. Yeah. And I think it's especially it was because of these people. Right. And you know what it's like. Absolutely. Hot, um, chocolate skateboards, for instance, is mm -hmm. a multi-ethnicity, um, no shape, no size, no matter what. Right. Everybody's in. This is a place for you. Yeah. You know, that, that is like... Oh, it's insane. It's got a like, good history too, man. Yeah. yeah. Amazing writer from the past. And, oh yeah. And oh, present. totally. Yeah. yeah. And they're, they're open and you know, with what we, we had start to establish this new type of thing, like new guys coming up, new mm. artists, Nathaniel Russell, Thomas Campbell, mm. you know, like just a whole new ball game. Like, like, yeah, I mean, like every era, it has, you know, a growth in and out, you know? Totally. And luckily, ours was in, like, the perfect time of my life, right. you know, for me to meet these people. How did you feel when they came up with the boards and everything? I mean, it must have uh, been a course. huge... Dude, it was funny. I, like, me and my aunt and my uncle, we, we play in a band together as well. Oh, you do? What yeah. do you play? Um, I play guitar, lead guitar, and okay. sing. I do rhythm stuff, too, but I really just, like, wailing. <laughs> yeah, I'm wailing. And, uh, <laughs> fucking... I'm on stage, like, lights are all bright. I could barely see out in the crowd. Mm -hmm. My uncle's like, hey, before we start the set, I just want to say something. And then he steps away from the microphone. The lights go a little bit brighter. I see the crowd. I look out. I see Wes Kramer. <laughs> like, I see Nick. I see all my friends just coming towards the stage and they got the board in their hand did you know, know they were there I had no idea you didn't know they, they were, were in pittsburgh <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who goes to pittsburgh right you know like i'm like looking out i'm just holy shit i was like this cannot be happening right now they got me it was saint patrick's day 2013 wow. so, you know like they, so they got me and i was just like <laughs> fucking holy shit you know like i did not even expect this to be something That's you know yeah. and it was just like crazy and with that responsibility comes a lot, a lot of grounding, a lot of fucking charge and a lot of chaotic nature and stuff. Just like searching, finding, mm -hmm. you know what it's like. Oh, you know? yeah, like, for how, sure. It's how old the are you? world. Like, when did that happen? 23. Oh, yeah. Still pretty young. 2013. Yeah. Yeah. I'm 27 now. Is the math right on that? Mm, maybe 22, 20. Hmm? What? What? You're asking the wrong people for me. <laughs> right? oh, oh, so it's 2013. 13? So it, I would have been 22. Right. Oh, see, I was right. 22. Right. Yeah. 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 Oh, there you go, Chris. There you go. Oh, huh? Yeah. yeah. Pulled that one out of my ass. <laughs> but uh, well, I was going to say, when, before, were you on DC before you got an element or did that happen after? Yeah, Jeff Pang got me on DC when I was on Listen. Oh, okay. I think before I got on Listen, I was on DC. But you were like fully on were you it wasn't on, on DC. Like you were just flow and traveling yeah. with the guys? Dude, like it wasn't until like probably like five years before I went pro or whatever. Like Jimmy at, or Sean Rogers asked me to go on a DC trip and it was <laughs> Lindsey Robertson, <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Smith, Matt Miller, Wes Kramer, Greg Myers. Oh, wow. wow. And then it was Danny Way, PJ. Colin, oh, the super tour. Wow. wow. Yeah. 
And it was just like aren't they all super I did, <laughs> no, seriously. Well, I did a I did a DCMs go to Arizona trip. <laughs> and like that's when I met Wes and Andy and like um not excuse me, not Andy. That's a funny story. Matt. Um a funny story about that, why he was called Andy. Who was Matt because, Miller? Yeah. Because oh. <laughs> he was stuck on a layover with Greg Myers. Okay. And Greg was like on the phone with Sean. He's like, yeah, we like Mr. Flight or whatever. Like, I'm stuck here with some flow kid named Andy. <laughs> <laughs> and fucking Matt Miller's like, my name is Matt, dude. No <laughs> like, way. Yeah. So like funny. classic Nurple. The Nurple stories go for days. Like, I never got fucking about miss name. Greg Myers so much. Like, DC is not the same without Greg. Like, what happened to Greg Myers? Dude, I last thing I heard, he was up in Hemet and he was pulling a baby out of the back of a car. Like on some crazy stuff because they like tried to take something from him. He was probably just like reaching in the car to get, like fucking do something. Well, it probably wasn't like that, but he got like arrested. Oh, oh, All this wow. crazy stuff okay. happened. And, Damn. Damn. Yeah, I miss him. No matter whatever the hell people go through in their lives, sure. you know, there's always a place for every human, and I I miss having him around. We in the hotel room on that trip, we branded him his arm with a safety pin. Oh. That, but he told us to. He's like, give me a tattoo. <laughs> He's just drinking a fucking heavy talking, like <laughs> <laughs> fucking diesel talking. Right. Like, like a heavy one. And he's like, give me a, hey, Matt, give me a tattoo. And we brand this fucking WAP face. You know what a WAP is? No. I don't yeah, know. yeah, I know what a WAP is. It's when you mix tobacco and marijuana <laughs> in a bong. Oh, okay. And then you hit it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the best name. You get like WAP. this WAP face. <laughs> like, so how do you brand this WAP? <laughs> Wait, so how like do you blow this like weird smoke out and everyone makes this weird face? It's like super funny. How do you make this out of you you bend paper clips and you make a how do, how does it how do you we make just a had, wap like, face? One fucking paper clip and okay. we just like kept burning it burning. over and over and oh, over in the would... circle of the head and okay. then the eyes and then the mouth and like, how did it turn out? Dude, it got so fucking infected. Oh, God. This fool's arm almost fell off. What? Jeez. Yeah, it was fucking green pus in oh. everywhere. He's like, we're on this trip. Oh, it's this God. whole thing. Like, he's like, can't skate because of it. Like, uh, I miss you, Greg, dude. Where <laughs> are you? I need you in my life, dude. Oh, my dude. God. Well, besides his arm almost falling, how was that tour? <laughs> was it? Oh, uh, tour is incredible, man. That was a. I mean, that's a heavy squad. Yeah. Were Mar you intimidated Henry at all? Was there oh, wow. too? Yeah, dude. And like, dude, like, of course, hell yeah, I was intimidated. Like, I, but these are the I big boys. But I understand are... that skating is just a family, and like, sure. I was uh, like, I was just already like, whatever, I'm fucking going for it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just show up and like, just try to like make friends, and and luckily, like, dude, it was beyond make friends, like. Those guys are like my closest family members. Yeah. Like Matt, Marquise, myself, and Wes, and Jimmy Asselford. Mm -hmm. We created mm -hmm. this like crazy tight niche thing. And like, <laughs> that's amazing. It will forever like be like one piece of my life. That that's right. That's I'll rad. always have that coin. Yeah. You know? uh, yeah. You don't seem like a guy that would come on tour and just kook it. You seem like a good, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, <laughs> but I mean, when you're a little kid, you don't know shit. You know, say the crazy still, shit. Though, you try like, to act out for attention. There's like, it's the nature of humans. Like, I know. We're fucking animals. But dude. you know, there's all these kids that come on and kook it, you know, but uh, you don't. You, Seem like a very nice. <laughs> well, you're a nice dude. Nice dude. Let yeah. skating do the talking, dude. That's right. That's, That's right. Dude, I just I think skating's aggressive and like like there's something about it that's like really fast and I can't get past it. Like I've been on hills and you just keep going faster. Yeah. Like <laughs> there's almost not a limit until you're looking next to a fucking light wave, looking at it and being like, holy shit, we're going 186,000 <laughs> miles per hour right now. That's the speed of light. Imagine <laughs> looking over, being on a train, traveling the speed of light. You think you'd see your own reflection? You wouldn't see shit, dude. No, you'd see your own reflection. Of <laughs> course. it's That's E equals MC squared. That's the, the relativity and the relativity theory. So if you were on that train going that fast, of course you'd see oh. your your reflection of your light. Because it would it's emulate. Going with, it's going with It would you. go with it. Yeah, yeah I see that. Yeah, of yeah. course, it would be. Then then there's the other one. Is it going twice as fast? <laughs> we need to start skating on shrooms. <laughs> yeah. We start doing the show on shrooms. I know. <laughs> Dude, wow. no, it's not even like a drug thing. It's like people spend a lot of time in science finding these things out. And we're totally. using it on the daily in our in our 
daily life without knowing it yeah using momentum pushing the board using friction all of it well people don't normally think about that kind of stuff when they're normal pushing the board using momentum you yeah. know what i mean no, it's, totally, a, yeah. it's a thing yeah i yeah. like you you're on a it's higher like being uh, on a bike all that stuff you know yeah. being a snowboard Drink, drinking the Gar- jarlsberg you know it's carlsberg cool. carlsberg Thank i got you, this bro. one for peace there you go oh, there like you it. go and yeah i had a couple carlsbergs with him on the last trip oh yeah yeah Great guy. Thrash and burn. I was going to ask something too. What, this is kind of random, but when you when you're out skating, do when you film stuff, are you kind of like in tune with like a spot that's or you, what that you want to go do something? Or are you just like let it go? Do you just go somewhere and just kind of? Dude, feel it's it crazy. Out? Like I've I've had so many moments where like we just show up at places and the spot would dictate my you know trajectory, mm-hmm. but now it's crazy. Like I'm coming up with like ideas for things I want to try. Oh. And like I understand the spots that I would need for them, so I'll find similarities and be like, "Fuck, this is the perfect thing for this trick," you yeah. know. And it, it and there's some like weird trick ideas, but like whatever, like I think they're possible, and I want to try to see mm-hmm. if they're possible, mm-hmm. you know. Do you practice so, tricks at skate parks and try to find them somewhere, or is it kind of in, a, in your head? You're like, "I want to. I think about this trick. I think about this spot. I want to do it there." And then you just try it? I think about every spot, but the dimensions kind of have to be similar to the way I think about them so that I could like um, pop off it or get my body weight back on top of the board. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes with the wall ride stuff, it's like yeah. you're sideways yeah. and like you have to get like your shoulders up to like land back on your board. And there's like some weird mental stuff that goes on thinking about it, just like anything. Like imagine Danny was thinking when he's sitting on top of the rolling about to 360 the great wall of china oh yeah right. you know what i mean like i'm sure he was like all right like it's just long drawn out like everyone does it you yeah. do it with all your tricks mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i can see it there's a fine tuned natured thing like obviously yeah spots show themselves and you're like holy shit like a little <laughs> kid like get me on that spot i don't even <laughs> care what we're doing right. i want to slap you that you know what yeah, i mean yeah for sure and then there's other days where i'm like fuck i'm itching like Today's a Nolly Backside flip day. Like, let's go. That's Nolly Backside flip. Yeah. God. Like, grip tape feels good today. Yeah. I was tripping on that one spot in the in your part in the uh, Element video, the Peace video. You Nolly heel flip some, like, yeah, oh, the two, vo- like, volcano thing. thing. What what the fuck was that, dude? <laughs> I wouldn't look at that and be like, no, Nolly heel. Nolly heel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if I can even skate that thing. I know. What is that? That was gnarly. That spot's in Chattanooga, Tennessee. That was a spot that Mark Stewart took me to. Oh, wow. You know? And um, yeah, we'd always talked about skating and it's a fountain and it's a fucking quarter to quarter. <laughs> yeah. Like made of concrete, perfectly aesthetically pleasing. I didn't go there planning to do anything. Just like you said, you know, like just, just go there and skate. Like, mm-hmm. That's amazing, dude. Yeah. And then the session started fucking cracking off I, like got a little 360 on it and oh. then then i was just kept battling and then i started trying the null heels for some reason <laughs> no no that's the best part for some reason i don't know no. for some reason he i have says. no <laughs> idea why i started trying that like i it's so hard to think back on that there's been so many sessions you know mm-hmm. especially in that video particularly oh i'm sure like there's so many cool sessions like hey, you ever forget i'm oh, sorry no i was just gonna say it worked out Oh yeah, it worked out. Do you ever forget that you do tricks? Um, like is that not happy? as bad as Mark Johnson, <laughs> 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 but I definitely, for sure, like I'll have crazy trips. You know, like where I'll be like, you know, taking psychedelics, mm. doing skateboarding for like a month or something, and then I like won't really realize it. You know, and <laughs> someone will be like, hey, like don't do that. You know, like, try something else. And luckily, those people love me, so <laughs> it's accepting. But but wait, how does this work though? If you're on a psychedelic and you're skating, right? You said for like a month or something. You like, on these like be, uh, yeah, like little little stints, like little, maybe little journeys, little journeys <laughs> yeah. right? Like explain this to me, right? Is it is it being in tune with like? Let me rephrase that. Go, go ahead, go. Ahead. I love this. If you, <laughs> this, is, this, is so, this is warming my soul. Well, I, I, I oh want to understand because I need to be in the in a right frame of mind to skateboard, right? Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it's working. You know, it's it's whatever. But being on a psychedelic, it's a whole different thing, right? Do you have to get adjusted to that, or are you just feeling every nook and cranny of your board? Or when you're off the psychedelic back skating again, do you have to get readjusted? Like, 
like br- break it down for me if you could i believe with like any sort of influence mm-hmm. um you can take small amounts of it and it, it not be as powerful as like sure inhabilitating mm-hmm. now if you know your body and you know how it reacts to certain things then you can calibrate it now moving forward with that mm-hmm. i would you know yeah, take a couple doses of something or okay. eat some mushrooms and I would go skateboarding. Now, it would kind of feel in a way as if I had just smoked a joint. Sure. You know? Okay. There'd be moments where I would be a little bit too high to fathom something. Mm-hmm. But something about the experience and, and coping with reality and what's going on, like it does give you a little bit of a center. It does make you like believe in yourself. It does give you confidence. Mm-hmm. Um. Now, I don't think it's for everyone. And right. I, that was a long time ago. I don't do this every time I go skateboarding. Right. Like, this is just an experimental phase, and I enjoyed it. Okay. And it was just, like, something. But maybe not something that I'm going to continue doing. I believe, like, grounded nature is really important oh, now. Right. And, right. I mean, that's just me going through my life, whatever. Like, oh, of course. Everybody does that, sure. you know. Yeah. But if I have the opportunity to... Um, touch on it and speak about those things Mm -hmm. like it's really cool because maybe some kids they don't have to go do that and they can just live through me you know like they can live vicariously through that right well maybe some people it doesn't work and like you said you know like you're like i need to be in this really fine mind frame well like i need to be dis disattached like i don't want to be thinking about nothing right skateboarding is the only time when those wheels hit the ground and my ears only hear wheels. There's, it's not noise. It's not a stream of consciousness of mm-hmm. words or energy or all that. Like all I hear is my skateboard and I can go this way and that way and this way and that way. And then I can choose what to do before it. I don't have to like, like I'm going here to do that. You know, you could just like skate. Like you just really feel skating. You could feel it, right? Yeah. You could feel it like in, inside and out. And, um, did it? Like, did you notice that it made you look at spots differently in a certain way? Totally. That's kind of like I got, I got inspiration from this experimental phase from like some artists, you know, people mm-hmm. like Alex Gray, who would you know go through their life as an artist and then let those things expand them into the people that they are now. Mm-hmm. And like I'd always been fascinated with those things, you know. So yeah, like you go to a spot and you just let it influence you. That's the canvas, you know, like yeah. whatever, like okay, like. Even if I don't get anything, like, I still want to engage. Hmm. And the fact of engaging is, like, everything in life. If you, you're not going to go down that hill unless you step on your skateboard and ride down it. You know, and then that one year on it, riding down, like, just wait. Just wait. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're going to be going 60. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Was there any times where you thought you were skating really well and then your friends tell you the next day, no, you were just sitting on the, on the lawn the whole time? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm completely attached. No. Okay. Um, yeah, I wasn't in like a far out mind frame. Um, I have you been, were in control. Oh, totally in control, yeah. yeah. And I'd definitely been experimenting with language and all this stuff too during it. Like mm. I've, I've taken it into all different facets, into okay. music, into, you know, like myself and, you know, I don't know. I can come up with a hundred different sentences that would sound far out, but make sense. But I'd prefer not to use them so that people can understand me. Okay. Right. And like, you can take that all directions, you know, (laughs) and those things really do things to your body and your brain. So it's not something that you do want to keep doing constantly. Oh, the psychedelics and stuff. Right. Little periods in time and, you know, then grow from them. Move on. Like shamanic resonance. Well, I'm glad that you have the, um, you know, the capacity not to uh, get totally influenced by it and, and keep and thinking that you keep needing to do it and do it, do it. Because I could imagine if you do a trick or if you're on a psychedelic, maybe, and you're having the best time of skating, like maybe you would think, you want to do it I need to again. keep doing yeah. this. Yeah. I need to keep doing this. You yeah, know? I believe the drugs aren't the things that would allow the person to land the trick. The person is the thing landing the trick. Sure. No matter what, Mm -hmm. the influence, you know? Just like, let that be a lesson for every part of your life. If you don't learn something from the route that you're given, then you'll never grow. Right. And if I continue just to think that those drugs would give you superpowers, then I'd fail. 
because there you it's go. the truth of reality and right. life. Now, as yeah, needless to say, like that experimental phase was a good thing for me, mm-hmm. you know. But right. it's not a good thing for everyone. That's right. You know? yeah. Which right. is all right. Yeah. And like, I'm okay with not being in that mind frame. I'm actually more excited about moving forward in the mind frame that I'm in. Sure. You know. Yeah. I love it, man. Kind of deep, sorry. No, no, no. no. Oh, I, sure. I, it's great, you know. Chris, you ever taken some before? Experience. I want to hear, like, have you guys ever, like, had an experience with something that was made in the 70s by a scientist? <laughs> no, but I feel like Raj wants to. Yeah. I think it's time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got the man right here if you ever want to, you know, he hit, it, hit him yeah. up. Yes, yeah. Raj, you know, yeah. hit up Evan. Just get a little microdose. Okay, sure. <laughs> Um, you guys no, heard but it's, it here first. It's, <laughs> it's very interesting, you know? It's, it's great that you, you had that yeah, experience yeah. And, and you made it work for you. Yeah, I'm a know? little bit touchy about sharing the information um, due to the fact that I don't think every kid People should be should doing this. Do it, right. Yeah, it's yeah. it's not for everyone. It was my experience and... Let that be okay. Yeah. You know? You're not out here I don't telling want, people to go do it. I don't do want it. people yeah. to do that with their lives. Mm-hmm. I think that, you know, young minds are very fragile. I don't think people should start smoking weed until after they're 20 years old mm-hmm. to let their brains completely develop. Sure. Because yeah. it inhibits the development of the brain mm-hmm. in certain, you know, yeah. fractions. You could say that with anything, alcohol, weed, yeah, psychedelics, totally. whatever it may be. Yeah. Everything needs moderation and control. Right. And if you don't have it, then you shouldn't be there with it. Yeah words to live by so important or else you're going to be trapped and then you're not going to be able to enjoy your life here on planet earth (laughs) (laughs) do you like living here on planet earth is it a good time or you dude uh, i fucking love living here (laughs) it's so fun i get to like i I believe it's fun because of our family our skateboard family there you go yeah you know like that's what's made this experience for me i love it for real is there any skateboarders that you hate? Is there any? Uh, oh, well, I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, I don't, think I don't uh, hate, hate this guy's body. I at all. know that's what I'm asking. It's interesting. I'm trying to really think if someone I hate with someone. a bad aura. I mean, people have said stuff to me that I didn't want to hear, oh. but I know they're good people. Maybe, yeah. And like, I don't give a fuck. Like, sure, you can. You can hate me. That's okay. Well, I'll, like I, I just can't hate you. Like I just <laughs> can't do it. Well, because this day and age, it's also really with with internet and and comments, people leave on Instagram and stuff. Like I'm sure there's people, you know, trolls and everything that that you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've gotten some dirty comments on yeah? the internet. See? Yeah. Why? And like, how do you react to stuff like that? I don't really. Look Are at you? The, a, I don't really look at the internet. So you post something, you know, you go. I do the post uh, and, photos. Yeah. I don't really go to the comments. Well, okay. No, I just Starhead Body, right? Yeah, Starhead Body. I, I started Starhead Body to be a band. Oh, you did? Yeah, and we actually just started recording our first EP. What? Wow. The moment I got here. The moment you got here. Uh, the moment after the fucking premiere. The next morning, Damn, I went yeah. straight up to Northern California, mm-hmm. and my buddy has a um, a cabin, who that is in the shape of a hexagon. Interesting. And so we started this project called Moth Prism. Moth Prism. Moth Prism. And how <laughs> how long do you think it'll take you to complete this? I mean, well, this. He, everyone thinks it's done now, but I want to go back and do a little bit more. A little bit more, yeah. Yeah, I think there should be some leads and stuff. I okay. mean, it's just music, whatever. And it's not going to be the best piece of my life or whatever, but it's going to be music. And we had fun making it. Mm-hmm. Um, we started kind of getting into the different time signatures of three, six, and nine. Dude had the hexagon-shaped room. Oh, there you go. And trying that different resonance between the two. Mm-hmm. Um, in the center of the place, there's a fire pit the hearth of the building oh and we wrote all these lyrics and all this cool stuff and at the end we burned all the lyrics into the hexagon let it be and then forever just like yeah we're gonna put it out whatever fuck it you yeah know? i, I know. can't wait to hear it yeah it's good to be good let me ask you a question okay please do because what video what video was that in that you did the the kickflip wall ride in in barcelona the, on, the, on the glass wall what, 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 what was that in um was that good, right yeah we made a promo for that the was video. a promo yeah. okay yeah 
Um, to me, that's the most terrifying thing ever because <laughs> you're actually going towards glass and you could break it and go through the glass and slit your whole body open and everything. Was there, is it, anything go through your mind like that? It's, Dude, that was a heavy session, man. <laughs> you can see it on the ride away and the homies and everything. Like, it, was, it was a heavy battle. Yeah. Like, like I said, you know, crazy journeys, getting to, getting to skate spots, whatever. Sure. I finally get to the fucking glass wall ride in Barcy. But like... I didn't know it was like I didn't know I was gonna be trying that trick there or anything. You know? I just wanted to skate the bump. You'd you know? seen it before. Oh, you had right, no. Yeah. You didn't even know you wanted to try that. I didn't that? even know you could get on the wall. <laughs> and then oh and then we were like talking about it, and I'm like trying to front wall ride it. And they're like, yeah, Haslam did it. You know, he did backside and frontside. Oh, okay. And I was like, holy shit! Like this is totally possible. You know. And I got one of the front wall rides. And mm-hmm. I was feeling it out. And I just started like doing the kickflip, whatever, and. I got into the first couple of them like pretty solid. Like I started riding down the glass and I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Like all hype, like heavy battle. Like mm-hmm. maybe an hour goes by. Um, I try one and I go primo on the glass. Oh, primo. Gosh. And there's two bullet holes in the glass. Oh, oh from your axles? From my axles. <laughs> oh. I broke the glass. Two little, okay. It didn't shatter. That was the only thing. Yeah, my homies are like, "Hey, maybe you should stop." And I was like, "Maybe, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. I was like, maybe we should stop too." You know. Right. Uh, and, then, and then I was like, "No, no, no, fucking going for it." And like the fear when after that was like, imagine the glass breaking and your legs going through. Oh, it, that's what I'm and saying. And then you fall down, so you'd cut you've your already legs compromised off. the glass. You know, and you could cut your legs off. That's yeah. right. Yes. You know, yeah. so I was just thinking about that. I was like, "How if this thing breaks? How am I going to handle this?" And I was sure. like, "You know what? It's not breaking. Like, fucking charge it." Did you look at the glass? You see how thick it was? Was it? A, I mean, like, it's is pretty it a thick glass. Big. It's, it's big, like okay. it's that bus stop Barcelona gl- glass. You Got know? it. Okay. And so, like, yeah, kept the battle going. Cop show up. Mm. Se- session shut down. Over with. Dude, security guards are out. They're talking about the glass fucking going off, like, freaking out. Like, everyone's like, I'm about to go to jail. Wow. We talk this guy down, whatever. Eventually leads to talking about Street League. <laughs> what? And, he's, and it was when Street League was in Barcelona. Okay. Right? And... Fucking somehow we convinced him if I paid the five thousand dollars to fix the glass, okay, then I could get another hour. Wow! And so did you the, tell him you were in street league and all this stuff? Yeah, and we, the, were the, like, we were like, yeah, I'm, I'm here for street league. Oh, so it was the know, time it was go- actually it was going, going on. on. Yeah, and he was like, oh my gosh, like I'm working street league. You know, like he's one of the guy. And oh, you're like, you'll son, see me there. <laughs> his, son, his son skateboards. Oh. You know, and we were like, Look, let's get him tickets. You know, we can get your son <laughs> tickets to go to street league. And he was like, all right, like, and some beautiful Spanish Barcelona. Wind flew our way, okay. <laughs> and this beautiful haze is casted over. And before I knew it, I'm grabbing my board, running back up to the top. And the security guards of the building were like, "What are you doing?" And I was like, "He told me I could do it. I have one hour." Wow. And I said, "All right, you have one hour." And he fucking shows me the clock. Like, oh. cops got the clocks. So like, I literally skate, try it, I try it, I try it, I try it, I try it, try it, try it. I'm sitting at the pole. And it went in the clip or whatever. Mm-hmm. He's sitting at the pole for like 59 minutes. <laughs> oh, you got <laughs> one minute left. And I'm like, all right, last one. You know what I mean? Like the last fucking one. Like the real skate route. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And it fucking worked. Wow. And I'm like riding out and I just start crying. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> amazing. I just start crying, dude. And like everyone was just all hyped. I couldn't say anything. I just like was so choked. Like, like not because I made it or anything, just because like the surreality of like mm. you know, chasing something, working hard for something, and then it actually working. There like you when go. something in life works in your favor, it's mo- it's moving. Yeah. And that that, that one had been like oh, just so moving for me and yeah, it was a really crazy experience. The, the cops were there watching the whole time too, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they, they were, were they psyched too? They were hyped, yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, we rolled it, like rolled up to them. I said, thank you. And mm-hmm. they left. And paid them the five grand? We got them tickets and then we never paid them the five grand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you see them at Street League the next day or whatever it We was? went back to film for the uh, peace video. We mm-hmm. went to Spain multiple times for three months. Okay. 
we'd get apartments and we'd stay in Barcelona for three months straight. That's why in my, my video part, there's lots of Spain footage. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm yeah. obsessed with this city. By the way, I loved in the, in the piece video that you guys visited like some of the old iconic oh, yeah. Barcelona old spots. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that's pretty fucking rad. Yeah. You don't, I mean, you still see those spots from time to time, but like the wooden rail that was there in there. Mm -hmm. And like I skated that thing. Well, I didn't skate it, but I went there and Kenny Hughes was skating that oh, rail yeah. and Kenny. all these, uh, <sighs> Big warm heart. you know, <laughs> <laughs> so it was just rad seeing all those old spots. You yeah. Guys yeah were Barcelona skating. and the history of it. It's like, crazy. Oh, it's so cool. Yeah. Dude, one trick that was absolutely bonkers is your front side flip at Bezos, the late shove it. Oh, uh, yeah. Dude. That was kind of a battle, too. That was a go back type of thing. Yeah? Yeah, for sure. That's a hard bump to skate because oh uh, there's no peak bump to it. It's crazy. And like every trick's been done. That's yeah. true. And I originally wanted to go try to get a front side 360 kickflip. Oh. And I found out that, um, who was it? Ben Norberg. Oh, he had done oh. it? He had done it. Mm. And I was like, all right, cool. And then like, <laughs> I was just trying to find anything I could do on the spot. You yeah. know what I mean? But he didn't do it with two different color shoes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he could have, yeah. I think what started the whole different shoe thing <laughs> <laughs> was in the news, there was so much white and black controversy. Mm, and okay. it was just such a like heavy thing for me because like, I believe everyone is exactly the same. We mm -hmm. all are organisms and if you look at biology it's just we just grow you yeah. know and i don't see any difference in any person and looking back on the history of america and how it's formed mm -hmm. it's just like disgusting and there's so many fucked up fashions of this world that like i just can't look past right. you know and so for these things to be happening in the news i was just like fucking around i was like i got two of the same shoes like one's white one's black like they're the same and they're a pair. Like, right. Fuck off. Like, fuck off. Oh, yeah. so there's some uh, symbolic. And then reasons, like huh? started just wearing any colored shoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Blue and red. Uh, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> Five years uh, filming for this video. Mm -hmm. You got hurt. Like uh, uh, yeah, right four so years into it, almost right. You what? You broke your foot. Was yeah. that how, what happened? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I fractured and dislocated my first and second metatarsal. Okay. And I wasn't sure what it was because in on the trip I had I, I was in Buenos Aires mm. and I'd gone to the hospital there and got an X-ray, but it wasn't an X-ray with any pressure on it, so it looked like my bones had sat the same. So they were like, "It's not broken; it's a sprain." They didn't even see the break in the X-ray. No, because it was just a small fracture oh. between the two bones, and it's called a Liz Frank fracture. Okay. So basically, like. <laughs> where it sits like mm -hmm. splits apart yeah, once you and put once you put once weight, you put on, it, weight right? on it like it doesn't work yeah. it was my oh. back foot so it's my pop sure so it's the one muscle that you you need you need to skateboard if you yeah. want to ollie mm -hmm. it's crazy because i literally literally had the same exact injury <laughs> same thing they said if you don't you, i didn't they didn't see the break at first yeah but if you don't get that fixed within a certain amount of time you get crippled yeah so wow. it's like it's, you have to fix it between like a six month period or something. Crazy like that, enough, right? um, during my injury and my surgery, I got a call from Corey Duffel, and he had the same injury. Oh um, wow! He didn't get his fixed for eight months. No Damn. way! Yeah, and I didn't get mine fixed for eight weeks. Okay. Jeez. So I was walking around on it, thinking it's going to be a sprain, and you're waiting girl, for it to get my better. My girlfriend's studying to be um, an emergency medicine, you know, doctor. Oh. And she was like, dude, like a sprain's four to six weeks. Like it's been eight weeks, like go get new x-rays. Yeah. And I was like, all right, like fine, let me go get them. Immediately I got there and he's like, all right, this is the case. It's a common athletic injury. And basically like if a football player has a cleat on and their cleat, the, the toe of their foot is in the ground and then they get hit, oh. it splits apart. Interesting. It dislocates and fractures. Huh. And it fractures right at the top and it dislocates throughout the whole thing. So then when you put pressure on it, it stays dislocated. Oh. So you can't use it. And the muscles aren't there. Wow. But because I had left it, um, I went on the rest of the tour I was on and it was like a five week tour and then waited fucking Jeez. three weeks after that. Was that a DC trip? Yeah, DC trip. Hmm. And like, I was like, it's, it's fine. I'm like, it's not broken. I'm staying on the trip, you know, like, yeah. whatever. Like, you ain't taking me out of this, you know? And 
we get to the doctor he's like yeah he's a liz frank fracture or whatever he explains kind of the deal and explains that it's common and i was like he's like you need surgery like we need to fuse your bones together or you're never going to be able to skate again and i was like fuck yeah fuse them up fuse them, <laughs> up. Fuse them fucking up right now damn so two days later got the surgery oh was, wow that's and it, quick yeah it was yeah. my first surgery first surgery ever yeah wow. and it happened like that and so I was planning to go visit my girlfriend Haley in Italy, mm. and she ended up flying and helping me with my surgery. Oh wow! Yeah, oh, it was like wow. the best thing ever. She like had my back, and she's already done like so much nursing and stuff like that. So now she's moving on past that. Okay. So I had like awesome support system and personal nurse, personal nurse, yeah. personal, doc <laughs> yeah. personal doctor. There you go. There you <laughs> go. Personal doctor. Got the bone fusion still in my foot. Um, Did it's they seven months kind of. Like from then till now, mm. I'm just now starting to skate again, but I'm really not supposed to be. Are the pins still in? Do they put pins in there? Yeah. Do you leave them in? There's pins and plates and I've left them in. I, I did the same thing. Like, oh, well, you know, do it. And if it hurts, I took mine out. It was a whole different story. Way so better? Like, yeah, way better. Yeah, I've got a lot of people telling me to take the pins out, mm -hmm. but I haven't skated in seven months. And like the mental thing like yeah i can spread myself with playing music and recording and doing art and trying to develop company stuff mm -hmm. and whatever but like what i really need is to skate i need a physical like thing right. i need that moment when your brain turns off like we talked about totally and so i'm gonna like take this with a grain of salt for like fucking three or four months mm -hmm. and i'll be back in the hospital with a broken bone somewhere else for sure like fucking charging charging <laughs> i can't fucking wait to break it again okay. you know what i mean <laughs> like fucking please like that means i was out there skating well listen skating's not going anywhere take your time with this injury you know what i mean make sure you could really skate without Thank fucking you. it up you no know yeah I mean? for sure i mean yeah. like it's pushing it a little bit but like i don't care i just like i know the feeling man you want to like, get back on the board you know it's just like 50 50 on a ledge right now is like, i know but listen, you know, uh, a couple more weeks or another month is nothing compared yeah. to what you could go through again. Totally. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Totally. So take your time with that. And look you know? into getting the, the stuff taken out. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm yeah. definitely considering getting it taken out because um, the human anatomy, and the human body, like, it's not a part of it. Yeah. So, no, if it's all if it's all fused together now, man, just, yeah. you know, that stuff them, doesn't need to be in there. Just get them so. unscrewed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. a lot. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. yeah, I need to hear that too. It was I've, been, I've been thinking about that. So the video took five years, right? You did. You luckily you had enough footage to k produce an amazing part. By the way, thank you. You know, yes. and um, it's appreciate good that it. You know, so it's good that you had enough footage to to make the because, like you said, like. I'm sure there's stuff that you would have rather you would have liked to do in the yeah. last year of filming. I'm sure you had shit on oh your mind. Oh my god, I was ready for like the last battle. You See, know? <laughs> like if it wasn't this like DC trip, like it would have been the peace video. So whatever, you know? right? Yeah, like I was like in this crazy mind frame. Yeah, you know, like skating will do that to you. It's possessive. It totally, you know, totally. I mean, dude, that wasn't a part where I thought you got hurt. I thought you were. Thanks. A whole way through. <laughs> yeah. Solid as fuck. Dude. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah. No, it worked out so great that I had the footage there and um, that those crazy Barcelona trips happened. Like, did some of that stuff. It's just like, fuck. <laughs> Can never repeat the high that I've ever felt <laughs> from those trips, you know? It's a magical place, Barcelona. Oh, yeah. It really is. Yeah. I always tripped out on the first line you had. You were charging down that hill with the ground there that's super, like... Oh, like the, the sidewalk? The yeah. side was super bricky. Did I you put, remember. like... No, it, you flew into that girl and you, you were like, she was like, ah, oh, like, yeah, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. Like the Barcy ground. Barcy yeah, ground. Barcy, Barcy sidewalk ground. Barcy <laughs> sidewalk ground. Classic, dude. Like, it rolls, but you got to be fucking ready sure. for it. Sure. Were you put on, did you put on bigger wheels or? No, you, no, no? Dude, you're. Minor was fucking riding some nice wheels, though. I was jealous. <laughs> <laughs> he was looking nice on that. Like, dude, his filming was so smooth. Like, mm -hmm. You know that Barcy ground. Like, oh, yeah. Vibrate off the board. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you literally can vibrate off your board. It's so easy. Wow. It's psycho. Filming is like the hardest thing ever. Like, the biggest kudos to the people that capture skateboarding the way that they do. Mm -hmm. Like, it's psycho. Like, I'm, obs I'm obsessed with filming and filmmaking. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I like to make movies for sure. Like, okay. I've already, like, you know, 
touched on a few of the concepts and done a couple of things to like learn how to make it happen. Yeah. And I feel like in the future, maybe one day, like maybe not on like Greco's level, but short film, maybe just making something. Yeah. yeah that I rad. think would be like really cool. And then maybe it doesn't even have anything to do with skateboarding, you know? Sure. Maybe it'd just be a piece in itself representing something. You could easily do it. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the, the people that we know in skateboarding too, the mo the talented people we dude, know. if I can get a call know? from Spike, I just want to talk to him. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> dude, and I want to talk to fucking Brain Farm, their whole team. I want to talk to Ty, honestly. Like, they got a good crew. Dude, yeah. it's so cool. Well, They're Spike's doing... probably listening, so yeah. he'll, uh, <laughs> dude, maybe yeah, he'll hit you I'm up. a huge fan of yeah. you know, filmmaking and what directing is and mm -hmm. how to make stuff happen, how to understand a budget and utilize it correctly for sure. a film. Well, they have a whole team you know? of yeah. people. It's you so know? sick. It's yeah. crazy. Like, dude, I would love to do that forever. You yeah. know? Yeah. Hell yeah. I bet you'd be good at it, dude. If I can work on a fucking movie forever, that'd be awesome. Yeah. I love editing so much. Oh, do you? Mm -hmm. I I bet you'd be good at it, bro. You should, uh... Thanks for the motivation, keep doing it. Yeah. Chris, seriously. Oh, come on, man. That. So, you know, how are you doing now, though? You said you're almost skating. It's been about seven months, you know? Yep. What, how long do you think it'll take you to kind of get back on on the board and start. Do you have any other projects lined up? Dude, I'm ready for 100% right now. 100%? You want to go straight to a spot? I got a filmer right here. One of the best oh, in the go. fucking Dude. world. Raj? You want to go to a spot? Oh, I would love to see these two work together. That'd I know. Awesome. Go. Be fun. That'd be really yeah. cool. Yeah, I don't done. think we ever filmed together, do we? Mm -mm. Mm. I would be honored. Let's go. Let's go. Right now. <laughs> Taking your camera. Chris. Um, <laughs> right now. So, but uh, I wanted to ask you too, uh, are you going to do, are you doing Street League this year or are you, uh, because yes, of your, yes, you are. I hope so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think it'll be fine. Um, even if I get it taken out, it'll be a month, mm -hmm. you know, until I can really kind of oh, sure. start a rehab program. Mm -hmm. um, I think skating is very therapeutic. It that is. was part of my rehab program, Absolutely. being injured. I would go to bowls and just pump. You yeah. know what I mean? And just w walk out of stuff mm -hmm. and like, you know, hobble out of shit. Sure. And that was part of my rehab regiment. And it helped me a lot and it kept me connected to my board when I couldn't, you know. Hey, it's great, man. Just so if I go through the street league, you know, and mm -hmm. maybe my foot isn't completely okay, like maybe I wouldn't be able to skate 100%, but still be able to be there yeah. and like be a part of this crazy side of skating and. You know, there's a lot of kids that go to these events. Like, Bro, you're like a fan favorite. Everybody yeah. loves yeah. seeing you there. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a cool thing, like having 2,000 people mm -hmm. in one place right. that are all there for the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just such a crazy opportunity for me. Like, Do even you, if I can't skate, I'll just be out there just like, thank you. Like, thank you for skating. You know, yeah. thanks for being a part of skating. You know, like. Do you feel the energy in the crowd? Do you, does dude, it, it's crazy. Yeah. Like, man, like. Skaters got passion. You can feel it. You drop in, and if you land something, it's like, oh my god. It's well, you're always trying something fuck. nuts too, dude. Yeah. You're yeah. always thinking outside the box at that place. Well, they have rules, yeah. <laughs> and like okay. skating doesn't have rules. So first thing I want to do is make sure that I break the initial rule. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most important thing. Well, you get the crowd going nuts every single That's time. That's what I'm man. saying. Yeah, People yeah. love watching you, bro. I was doing some shit and. I started realizing that you can go outside of the course. There's, oh, yeah. There's stuff out there. Mm -hmm. And we got emails saying that if you land outside of a certain dimension, you will not, it will not count. You will not get a score. Oh. And so, like, once I felt that, I was like, oh, what's next then? Like, what after that? If you stall a camera that somebody's filming on live TV with, will you get scored? Like, what are they not going to score me for? I want that. You want to do want what, that. You, you want to do what want, they're not going to score I you. I want that just to see, you know what yeah. I mean? Because like, I felt it once and I was like, no way. They're not going to score that. I feel like they like, should though, because I mean, uh, yeah. it's like, skateboarding, right? If dude, you go over the barrier and you do something amazing, I why think not? There should be an expression category. There you go. Just like style is a thing. Sure. There, t expressive nature is everything in skating. Kelly, look into that rule, man. Oh, talk to who you need yeah. to talk to. Yeah, huh? sure. Tell them to score that's a cool, Evan that's on, a cool on uh, going thing. over the barrier. And like, I don't care to be a winner. You know, just being a part of it yeah. and being in that thing. Like, fuck yeah, score me last, whatever. Like. 
But at the same time, like I still get to be there and I still get to be involved with all my friends and there you, go. you know skaters that I normally wouldn't skate with as well. Some of the best skateboarders Some in the, the world. Best skateboarders in the world. It's crazy. And I learn from watching those guys skate every time I go. So. Mm-hmm. If I get to go this year, it's going to be like psycho, dude. I'm just going to be on some other shit. I've had that seven months off. I'm in this crazy mind frame. Like now I'm looking at it like, okay, I'm going to be super grounded. I'm going to be super healthy. I can't wait to freaking try what Naja tries. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Go right behind him. Yeah. I I'm going to try what Billy tries every time. Yeah. You've been traveling and, wa- and going to all the contests too? Uh, no, this year I took the whole year off. Mm. But I saw, didn't I see you in London? Or? No, I wish. I had talked to Molly who was running Street League and I was trying to get her to fucking... <laughs> Fly me in from the ceiling, but playing the national anthem on electric guitar. <laughs> oh, that would have been good. It, I want it. And I'm like, if this happens one day, I'm going to be so happy. <laughs> like, <laughs> the craziest idea, but if it happens, it's not that bad. They have the wires up there and stuff. It's normal to what winch people back. Sure. You know? Yeah. But if you do it with a, a guitar. And oh, yeah. Do, Dun, dun, Dude, the dun, crowd dun, would go completely dun, insane. Dun, 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 People dun, would love it. Yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> psycho. Like, I don't know why they wouldn't do that. And then I get to the bottom and the pedal board's there. And it's like, it's, ah! <laughs> 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 that would be, I could see it now. That's the lights more, the lights go off. It's kind of more dime glory challenge vibes. No, but yeah. still, oh, yeah. it's, it's very <laughs> you know? uh, exciting. Lights go off, spotlight goes up in the, in the rafters. And here comes Evan just wailing away fun, at his guitar you know, yeah i i've been inspired by ray barbie and tama guerrero oh yeah you know like yeah. come on f- first fucking street skaters like they play music and it's fucking good and they play music in skate videos i grew up watching there you mm-hmm. go you know what i mean yeah. it's like pff, like how how am i not going to like just completely hold that as sacred you know? sure yeah so besides music and all that stuff do you like any what 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 else do you do on like on your time off you know that you don't you're not time skating off. dude i love camping man camping. i spend most of my time just like out in the middle of the cuts like as far deep as i can get away from light just looking up at the freaking stars man like this is in pennsylvania or where do you where anywhere. do you live right now um right now i'm a nomad where does a nomad sleep i really enjoy sleeping near zion national park i know it's far from it's here, a great um park just, i've been there there's lots of blm land there the bureaucracy of land management oh those are public places okay. so you could go anywhere you want on these public lands and you can camp oh interesting and yeah um me and my buddies from orlando we started a camping brand oh um called no hotels no oh. hotels yeah and so okay. we're trying to sell tents and canteens and backpacks and chow kits and Sick. camping utensils right. you know wow but to skateboarders like making it affordable because mm-hmm. like a lot of people don't have that much money in skating that's true and so if we can make it affordable like then it'll fucking be awesome you know yeah. like, I at least can supply people with the an experience in a sense you know because anytime i don't just go get a freaking motel Mm -hmm. like i end up having the best experience i'm sitting out there you know in nature just completely fucking chilling right or at some crazy swimming spot where we'll wake up at sunrise and jump in the water like just cool stuff you know like you stay outside of your boundaries you don't know what's going to happen you don't know if a bear or a snake's going to be there (laughs) You know, it's like, and like, how are you going to react? Well, you better figure it out. You better, yeah. <laughs> yeah, or else you're done. And like, we study the planet and the plants and the animals on it. And mm-hmm. it's just crazy. It's like, it's like just people do that for their jobs, but we totally. get to just like live in it. Have you uh, encountered a bear yet? Yeah, we've encountered bears for sure. I heard you throw rocks at their feet, little pebbles, and they get really? spooked. Yeah, that's what I heard. Oh, really? crazy. Yeah. I never heard that. Yeah. Have, Dude, you, know, just have you had anything crazy no, well, happen to you? I don't think like anything psycho has happened. I haven't been stung by a scorpion or bit by a snake. That's I haven't good. been mauled by a bear. That's right. Luckily. <laughs> yeah. But I've seen bears, I've seen scorpions, I've seen snakes. So I mean it's like literally fractions away from that, you know. You could die at any moment anywhere. But if you don't know how to like use the planet for what it's worth, then you'll never know how to. You have to oh, yeah. you have to try. So you spend time out there, you get your tent, you know. Get your water, get your knife, try to carve a piece of wood and then make fire just out of it. Yeah. Just try. 
I've you're going to have to learn how to diffi- do it. It's difficult. And once you do, you're going to know that you tried something and you learned it. And now you can pass that knowledge on. That's the fruits of the native community. Mm-hmm. America has destroyed this. This is a part of something that, I mean, like, it is completely proven that science or, excuse me, um, nature can't be overcome by techno- technology. Mm-hmm. It's, that's not like... There's no, there's no way technology is going to beat nature. Right. Why aren't the school systems teaching kids how to use the planet correctly? That's true. You know, yeah. it's just crazy to me. Right. And, but they're teaching them history of bullshit. Right. You know, it's just psycho. Like, it's almost scary to ha- ha- have the idea to have a kid and bring a kid into this planet. Because, like, they're just going to teach him this. Like, right. Like, I'm going to have to teach them that that's not true. Like that we came here and we killed a bunch of people just to have the land. Yeah. And like, oh, yeah, cool. Like, fucking put your fist up. Like, dude, you fucking killed babies. Like, fucking assholes. But even, like, how to survive. Like and then saying, that as well. You know? yeah. I, I mean, watch these survival shows. Like, I love the survival shows. I'm not a camper, okay? But I watch these shows and I'm like, okay, I got to remember this stuff. Because if, if it just so happens I get stranded out in the forest, I need, to know, I need right? to know how to lo- live, yeah. you know? God forbid something crazy happens to the world. I think about that all the time, <laughs> you know? Evan. Let me tell you, yeah. I'm alone half the time, you know? <laughs> I, I feel like if something happened, like I would be alone and I'd have to go out and... Be you and Larry. It'd be me and Larry, my cat. Hell yeah. You know? Or I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm always driving or something. Oh, let's think about that. You know, if something happened right it's now... It's really important. But but people band together when stuff like that happens oh, yeah. too. Yeah. So yeah, you there, wouldn't be alone. There'll be a few fortresses for sure. I would love to be in your fortress, by the <laughs> Thanks, way. Yeah. I mean, just call me wherever you are. I would love are. to keep learning more so that I can pass that knowledge on correctly. There you go. You must <laughs> like the, the Element camp then. Do you go up there a lot? Dude, yeah, yeah. Um, Element um, lost that camp. I believe it's... Oh, really? I believe it's um, a mix between Deluxe and NHS now who run that camp, oh, which is crazy news. Yeah. Oh, no way. Um, but dude, there was a program there called Elemental Awareness. Mm-hmm. And this is a program started by two of my really, really close friends, mm-hmm. Todd Larson and um, Mike Kirshner. And they are doing exactly what I'm saying. They're teaching skateboarders because they're receptive mm-hmm. how to survive in nature. And that was a program, and that will always be their program, wow. regardless if the skate camp stuff doesn't, whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. That is a thing that exists that they are teaching. And it is like, it's the most inspiring part yeah. of being a part of this whole thing is I got to meet these guys, you know. They're so incredible, and the knowledge that they possess is like straight from Tom Brown, which yeah. is like a dude that would like fall out of a tree onto the back of a deer to provide for the, his family with a, a spear. That's you know, insane. just like what? craziest things, <laughs> learning how to make traps in the middle, snare traps in the middle of water mm-hmm. to catch fish out of the air. Right. Like psycho stuff. That's like really tuned things. Like you got to be like, you got to really know what's going on with nature yeah. to like make those things happen. I think that would be the most difficult part for me. If I was tr- stranded somewhere in the forest or something, I think it would, be, even if I was dying, I think it would be really hard for me to actually take another animal's life so I could survive. Totally. You know what I mean? Like I, I just have, oh, it's definitely, but you know, I love it's definitely animals and, yeah. and different things. But I think know, it would be really difficult. Totally. But, but it's, it's easy to eat a prepared meal. Absolutely. You know what I mean? mm-hmm. you know? No, totally. So with that comes that thing where it's like, oh man, well, you know what? I would put myself in that situation. You know, mm-hmm. I think you would too when you when it came down to it. Maybe yeah, it would be hard. It would but be hard. I would. You do would it. understand I do the it, fruits of it, and then you would have a different respect for that growth. Sure. You know, but but at the end of the day, though, I could fish. Yeah, I, I can kill a fish easily. Yeah, I don't know why. Maybe because they're <laughs> underwater or something. I can't pet them. Or, yeah. or I don't know. <laughs> but dude, either way, everything we're talking about, like I kind of got introduced to this mm-hmm. through going to lake sequoia it's amazing you know the element skate camp mm-hmm. the one that dave meddy had started do you guys know dave Meddy? hell yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. dude yeah. and i just got to see him recently on our no hotels trip oh dope and we recorded a song together wow seeing meddy and knowing what he started and uh, it's just like psycho like that place is like the reason why i, I spend my time and my girlfriend's time in the woods. <laughs> I, <laughs> you know? That's amazing. And she's back in this. She'll sit there with me in a tent, 
surrounded by fucking tarantulas. I shit you not. Oh. We were on this one freaking camping night in Croatia <laughs> on the side of this hill, and there was a thousand spiders on the tent, around them, and they were like this big. And like, I was like, yeah, just go in there. You're fine. You know, she's like, like, all right, yeah, I'm fine. You know, like, sip up the tent. I'm like standing out there, like flicking spiders off the side of the fucking tent. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what kind of spider? Nature is real. I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> did these yeah. spiders, were they out during the day or did they come out at night? To... They come out at night. They weren't there. In the so you day. didn't even know that they were there. Um, no, we got there at night. Mm. I mean, it wasn't until she had a headlamp on that was placed right above her eyeballs to mm-hmm. where she could see the reflection of their eyeballs. Oh, and she started freaking God. out. And I was like, what? I don't see it. There's no spiders. And she's like, all right, you know. And then she's like, put this on. And I looked and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I'm so everywhere. sorry. You know, I brought you here. She's like, dude, we got this. Like, whatever. Like, fucking got it. We cook dinner on a fire. She's on rocks surrounded by spiders. Oh, my God. I'm surrounded by spiders. And we just eat our dinner and we go to sleep. And like... If there is a relationship, if there is with nature, that is, you know, mm-hmm. you build them by experience. So sure. You find yourself in a scenario where you have the opportunity. Get your crew and your friends and your family, get under the stars and just go for it. Yeah. Like, whatever. Like, have that experience. Have that life, you know. You can stay forever in a metropolitan area, but, you know, as soon as you get outside, you'll learn something about yourself and what you're capable of which is the most important part about, you know, being a, a person here, sure. helping people, being a parent, you know. You are the calmest dude I've ever met. I know. I, I, <laughs> I, if I see a spider in my bathtub, I freak out, you know. No, it was a really crazy experience. She was very calm and wow. I was, I was scared, yeah. you know, but at the same time I was like, all right, they're not hurting us. Right. I bet they're not poisonous. I bet they couldn't hurt us if they tried. You know, you just start like having this different relationship with the planet and you're like, oh, the spider is fucking scary. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. that's where my mind would have gone. Yeah. So that's what I spend my time doing. Okay. I love camping. I love the earth, man. I really do. Listen, bro, is there anything else we should talk about while we're, while we're here? Let's talk about your guys' views. This is your show, you know? Sure. <laughs> Let's talk about your guys' views on the future of skating. Where do you think it's going? I mean, we're speaking of contesters. Yeah. The crazy new Olympic thing oh, yeah. coming up, right? As well as this wholesome establishment that we're all a part of. Mm-hmm. You know, this mm-hmm. thing like that we can't let that big beast have anything to do with. You know, like there's right. something about it. Like, like they're like almost trying to reap the benefits of like that tight niche thing that like we have. Mm-hmm. You know, and if it doesn't get done correctly, right. Like, there could be some crazy stuff to happen. Like, what do you guys think about the future going forward with skating? And like I said, for the lost boys and the lost girls, like, and the artists and the musician skaters and, like, people that, like, have this flavor. Mm -hmm. What do you think is going to happen? Let's start with you, Rod. You're talking about Olympics? Or are you talking just in general? I just mean, like, with skating. Skateboarding's always fucked up. That's obviously one little attribute of it. But I think skateboarding's always fucked up. Yeah. Like, it's always just going to be a mess. Yeah. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Well, dude, it's just a bunch of dudes that picked up a skateboard. Yeah. Uh, dudes and girls picked up a skateboard and just l- whatever happened, happened. Yeah. 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 It's not like, we, oh, we're going to build this thing up, but we're yeah. going to... But they're trying to make it that way. Like, we're they're trying to build it up to be something like that, but mm-hmm. it's not. Yeah. The fruits of it are it's, expression. It's a hard like, thing to control. Yeah. It's it's not meant to control. Yeah. The only thing real- you got to do is basically get more people on the skateboard and, and then people would start riding a skateboard and they're just going to be like... Fuck the rules! I'm gonna go skate. Well, the, the whole thing is, yeah. you know what I mean. But it's not a group decision, yeah. though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's a certain division of people that are that are pushing <laughs> for it and steering it. And, steering right, it yeah. and all of us, well, nobody's asked me. Yeah, I don't have <laughs> no. But I didn't. I haven't. I haven't gotten an email yeah. asking if this is if. I, if what, what do I think? Yeah. You know, that's so, why I'm asking. I mean, yeah. like, how does this? I mean, fuck that. That doesn't even have to be something that weighs into this equation. Mm-hmm. Like. What do you think about like our net, f- our fabric, our fabric, our network, our circles that keep expanding? Like how, like he says, they're, of course they're going to be fucked up and they're always going to happen. Right. And you know, like, how, how do you feel about it going forward from what you've seen and what you've experienced with it? I think what, about skateboarding, what I think ho- I want there to be forever is just 
the way that we looked at it when we first started, that it's kind of like an art form, it's a way to express yourself. And I think that's what I always want that to be in skateboarding. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, hey, if some if people take it and they do shit with it, that fucking sucks. And if it ruins skateboarding, but as long as I can go out and I have my friends that I connect with and do that, I don't care. Yeah. I don't know if that sounds crazy or not, but okay. I think that's kind of... As long as skateboarding is still fun to you. It's, yeah, that's, that's yeah. actually the ruined. end result. Yeah. And I wish and I hope that we, the people that love it, the people that... I hope the people that love it can take care of skateboarding and bring it to where it should be. Totally. And yeah. have generations of people that love it take care of it. Even in those crazy lights that you're talking about, like, there could be people that could hold it correctly. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah, they can yeah. represent all these things that are unrepresentable yeah. almost. You know sure. what I mean? Like, what the things that we're talking about are like, they're just so special. Like, I hope for skating that everyone out there sees that it's an open door for them to escape a piece of life that maybe they don't like. And mm -hmm. I hope that that is the progress in the future of skating. Right. I hope that each boy and girl out there coming up that don't have the best situation feel some sort of calling to our family and then the right person being there with the open arm. You know, like mm -hmm. it's the most important thing about it. And then no matter what happens with some establishment or big corporation or shift in management or jobs lost, jobs gotten, like no matter what with that, you know, almost democracy style thing, like mm -hmm. it'll have a fundamental value, you know, respect, love, yeah. you know, all the right things. And I, what I love about this show, about being a part of it is stuff like this, where we get to like just talk about skateboarding, yeah. but also people get to watch and understand the history of skateboarding. Dude, you guys are yeah. such big fans of skating. I'm like it's loving the cool this because oh. I'm, <laughs> big, I'm the biggest fan of skating. So it's it's like, fun, dude. It, it's a good time, but I think... I, I think that's a cool part of this show is yeah. that people get to hear about people's experience of skateboarding and they can relate to it, dude. Yeah, and I totally. think that should live. It's not like an encyclopedia, but you know what I'm saying? I totally. Know. I was a little nervous about coming on the show because I'm still so young and mm -hmm. interviews that I like to watch are with people that are a little bit older and have already had a career and they have stories to tell, yeah. right? you know? And like, I feel like my stories are just like baby compared to those guys, you know? Everybody has a story though. Yeah. You know, that, totally, that's a great yeah. thing about skateboarding is everybody's path that led them to the skateboard is different. And I hope like, yeah, I can learn from these conversations and maybe I have ideals mm -hmm. about things now, but they'll grow and they'll change. Sure. And then yeah. next time we talk, you know, maybe I'll have something, you know, bright to say you know exactly. instead of bashing things and like because i'm in a pseudo rebellious state you know <laughs> right, which is all right, right. well sure. dude, i won't be like this forever you know? no i'll hey, grow you're helping the state of skateboarding a lot oh my god yeah. you're you, the, you skateboarding is like really helping with keeping skateboarding together because keeps it pure and fun you're, you you yeah. keep it pure and fun and Thanks. when i when we watch you it's a it's it's all happiness you know what i mean so that's, that's how i get when i watch you guys skate so i feel i understand dude i get it like i yeah. feel that dude if i didn't have you guys then this would be really boring you know oh, It'd be super boring thank you bro yeah well people are watching you and they're they're getting inspired by you so that's a trip right is, is that weird to think or what dude yeah i hope everyone gets hope out there honestly like, i hope they understand that there's like some really cool dynamics going on here yeah like there's lots of place and we need new skate tricks like make up some tricks like i want to see some crazy shit like it's the millennial age like it's about to be 2020 and aliens are gonna visit the planet <laughs> <laughs> i would actually love to see that though yeah i'd love to see aliens come down here it's and see like, what imagine them looking at a skateboard like what the fuck? that would be sick <laughs> i never thought about that <laughs> Like, oh, yeah, of course. Like, they'd be like, Pfft. unfortunately, well, our plan would try and destroy them. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> you think there's that's, aliens that's, out there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not far out to think that. Like, if no. you know biology and you know how it grows with the sun and the water, yeah. of course, there would be aliens out there. Something is somewhere, grown. Somewhere. Somewhere in the universe. Something is grown. Yeah. I'm assuming we're separated from it because we're super immature. We mm -hmm. can't even take care of our own biological hazards. 
the fucking ozone layer is split open and the sun rays are coming in. Maybe my kids will have to live indoors. Or maybe, maybe they'll get, you have to fly somewhere else. Yeah, or maybe they'd have to spend their life on a fucking shuttle. You know what I mean? Yeah, like going to Mars. It's just crazy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> is, dude, it's psycho. Like, mm. we need to step up. <laughs> like, yeah? We really got to step up in humanity. And I try to do my part, but it's a collective effort. You know, sure. Everybody's got to fucking step up. There needs to be a government change. You know, there you I go. think people would follow suit. I know you guys, and I know skateboarding. I know skateboarders could rally uh, for damn sure. If there's one crew right. of people that could oh, fucking yeah. rally, it's us. We'd be there for everyone else. Jim yeah. Thebo would be president. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah. Hell yeah. Thebo would fucking take Pretty care much. of it. He'd take care of it. Or maybe the aliens will come down and be like, y'all are fucked up. Let us, we're going to show you guys how to do it. Yeah. I believe it would be an intervention. Something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I believe they would give us a small speck of technology in trade for, mm -hmm. s for giving them biology so they can create life here. Oh, there you go. I'm assuming something like that. Something like that. I, I would hope that at least, or no, I would hope that we would be become friends with this other planet or whatever these yeah. other existence. That's all I got to say. Kelly wants to go skate with an alien. But imagine if alien did a fucking tray flip, dude. Listen, bro. Big fan. <laughs> dude, thanks. Big fan. I'm dude. a big fan of yours. Listen, Evan, man. He's, sque <laughs> he's squeezing my hand really, really. You got a good grip there, bro. <laughs> uh, listen, there, I would, we would like, as we do with all the guests that come on the Nine Club, we, well, dude, where are you going, bro? Where is he? Oh, he's going to go give Kelly a, a thug hug there. there we First go. time. Yeah. It's pretty good. We didn't have him tethered down to the uh, headphones. That's why. Oh, that's Watch true. Come that's up true. From, uh, before he was even like really sponsored. So it's Man. pretty amazing to see what he's done. You're gonna cry it's right very, now, Kelly? Uh, I thought he was gonna I don't cry. Know word to describe it. It's just amazing. If there he didn't go. lead the way, then I would have had no way to follow. So thank and, you. And then if Chris didn't lead the way for me, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, it's infinity, dude. It just keeps going. That's infinity. Kelly still tries to get my autograph every day. <laughs> it's Nanagon it's infinity. But listen, we want to give you a good little care package to take home with you. If you want, what? maybe some, maybe a shirt, uh, some, cool. you know, a coffee mug or something. Dude, Will you please yeah, go get coffee. him some, uh, dude, uh, what do you wear? Size large? large? XL, baby. XL. I'll cut it down. Yeah. How tall are you, man? 6'3", 6'2"? 6'2". 6'2", 6'3". Somewhere around Some there. of the tallest skaters are the best. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Crazy. Best style. Thanks for the swag, man. Hey, dude. Speaking of tall skaters, Matters is taller than I ever expected. Matters expected. is Holy cow, right? And yeah. isn't he gorgeous? Great dude. Good looking dude. Funny dude. Good looking, fucking hilarious human. Yeah. I've never, I, I the first time I talked to him was at the Element premiere. Dude, he opens his mouth and I'm just like, oh my God, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't insane. know. He's got this weird. Hey, man. Yeah. yeah. Hey, man, you want to go to the beach? <laughs> hey, La Playa? <laughs> Ah. Talented skate. You, the whole team, element team. I mean, great squad. Good bro. squad. How many people are on the team? I don't know. They do rad shit too. Do, do, mm -hmm. Donnie Barley shapes boards for the skate shops mm -hmm. and stuff, you know? Dude, that so program's rad. rad. Thank mm -hmm. you, bro. Listen, here we go. This is a. Uh, Dude, are you a fan so of sick. Are you a fan of Mark Appleyard? Teammates, Shit, that is. I'm a, just asking him if he's a fan. Art, of course not. That's his art. Mark yeah. Appleyard drew this for us. It. That's me and Raj yeah. sitting Dude, there. He draws the most insane Homer bat I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Mark Appleyard is a legend. And then to follow that one up, he did uh, Kelly dresses <laughs> Annie McDonald. Oh uh, my god! <laughs> there you go. Of course you would. Yeah, lemon uh, props, dude. Listen, lemon props. Bro. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, Apple Yard's shit. the best. Best dude so ever. Um, dude, thank you. These are awesome. There's a long sleeve tee. Looks like you under the long sleeve Hell tees. Yeah, man. And uh, XL the crew neck Dude, sweater it's you, Oh, this is beautiful. I think you guys are making some great stuff, too. Yeah. Do, you know. do people know that this is out of the house? It's seriously, uh, Rogers, the warehouse manager. The warehouse? <laughs> yeah. Like literally out of the house. It's out of the house, yeah. yeah. If we had a garage, it'd be in the garage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't have a garage. They just got a house. They got a living room. <laughs> they got yeah. a living room, though, and yeah. we're in it right now. <laughs> Raj is the warehouse manager. He does a great job. Yeah. And uh, Kelly, I don't, know, uh, I don't know what he does. Sometimes but Social media. Yeah, social yeah. media. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't know. 
Evan, dude, dude thank, thank you so much, so much for again stuff. for coming by, dude, bro. Love Listen, you guys dude. So hey, much. thanks for everything. Please dude. come come by anytime you want, dude. dude. Thanks, man. You now know? I know you guys got so much swag. I'm gonna be here all the time. Hey, dude. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to get product for these kids, homie. Oh yeah, yeah. We're almost dropping there. boxes off. Let's We're go. almost there. But you know what's the best part about it? Mm. Is I have the opportunity to take money straight from the corporations, sure. buy stuff from people like you, mm -hmm. support causes, okay. buy stuff from skate shops. It circles the money around like mm -hmm. an infinity like you're talking about. Perfect. I get to give back right away just by taking money from them. Yeah. Give it right back to them. So if you would let me, I'd love to buy a box of stuff. Oh, dude. And then I listen. can support what you're doing and get people product. So it's the ultimate wham, bam, thank you. I love <laughs> it. I love it. Listen, I'm, I'll give you a discount code for the website. Huh? Yes! <laughs> Fucking people, you heard it here first.